going on guys? It's your boy Seto here, bringing guys the other video here today, bringing guys a Photoshop tour on how to make your own cool Plexus backing design. Now, if you guys do not know, I have a very strong passion for Plexus. I have like at least like maybe six or seven Plexus tutorials out there on my channel. If you guys do not know what Plexus is, it's pretty much an abstract um, kind of effect where you kind of have like little polygons and like every intersecting point or every point has these really cool little circles on it and it sort of looks really dope right so if you guys not remember before I had a uh, plexus text effect here it is right here if you guys want to go ahead and google it it's right there it, it was received very very well and it had a very like everyone just really loved it and I, I use a Google backing for this on this actual preview here and I believe my freaking backing looks ten times freaking better um, pretty much I saw the idea uh, his Twitter is at uh, at RO underscore motion um, he's freaking awesome he's freaking dope he had a pretty cool plexus kind of stock he made in after effects however I don't really want to use after effects I want to use a Photoshop just because I don't know for more fun for me and also if you guys combine this tutorial here with the actual plexus tutorial that I have for the text effect you guys will get a pretty beast ass freaking setup. There's, it looks really good. I can't wait to show you guys how to do it. It's very easy. All you're really using is your uh, your pen tool, of course, your shape tool, your polygon shape tool. Um, if you guys choose to, of course, the circles as well, and then of course, like a couple blurs, a couple of different kind of blurs, and like CC work. Very easy, very dope, and it's very very awesome. It looks very good for pretty much anything, in my opinion, for like when it comes to social media backgrounds or advertising. You need something on the backing to sort of make it look really dope. Why not this? So. I'm done talking, of course, two likes on the video equals a secret down below, and if you guys are wondering, I may be uploading a little bit more every now and then just because I am out of college now, or not out of college, I'm done with my first two years at a certain college, and I'm going to be transferring very soon, so I did graduate from that college, going to be transferring very soon, so maybe like maybe like two or three months or so, but in the meantime, we're going to be doing a lot more videos and stuff like that, why not, I know you guys really freaking want it, so I'm going to start off with this tutorial here today, and I, yeah, I do hope you guys enjoy your freaking Friday and stuff like that, so let's go ahead and get this thing going. Okay, so pretty much as you guys can see, it's very, very dope. Looks very simple. And the first thing you're gonna end up doing is making a new layer. And what I would suggest you guys to do, if you can see my example again, I have a couple of different polygons. I have a polygon that's a pentagon here, five sides, and of course I have eight for octagon, and then of course I have mm, there's like a six somewhere in here. But pretty much why I did that was it just make it look a little bit more sort of organized or or more uh just more to it for me, okay? So the reason why I did that, or how I did that, excuse me, is I used my polygon tool. It's uh, under your rectangle tool, and if you just click on that, you see this word sides? That's, of course, gonna give you the number of sides every time you do this. So I put six sides, it's gonna give me six. If I put eight sides, it's gonna give me eight sides, and so on and so forth. So pretty much, it depends, like, if you wanna put 45, that's pretty much a circle, right? Okay, cool. Uh, I, I was curious, I know what it was gonna do, okay? Uh, so pretty much five sides here. And I'm gonna start off with a pentagon, right? I'm sort of low-key thinking in my head if I'm saying Pentagon, I mean, it's not five sides, but I know it's, I know it's five. I'm just, it's one of those things, you know, that's so, all right, let's stop talking. Okay, so, your polygon that you have here, you're pretty much going to rasterize it just because you don't want to get uh, interrupted when you actually make a pen tool path, if you just accidentally select the actual point. So just rasterize it, we're going to lower opacity down, uh, let's just say like that's pretty good, okay. So pretty much what you're going to be doing the entire time, every single one, every single time you do this, you're going to make, you're going to choose a polygon, whatever size, you're going to make a new layer, you're going to load the opacity down so you, so you can see the size very well, or if I just load the opacity just because. Um, on this new layer, you're going to pretty much click every single point on the outside. If you choose to, uh, what I actually did was, I didn't actually close it, I just stopped like right here. So I kind of like skipped one side. So you got, you already see the polygon, all right? Or excuse me, you already see the pentagon. There's already five sides. You already, your eye already closes this on its own. So the reason why I did that was I didn't want to close it because it, it just sort of made the actual abstract stock or backing look a little bit more better to me. So before you do anything else after this, click on your brush. So be on your keyboard. Change your brush to these settings. Change your brush from size, whatever it is, to two and or three. It doesn't really matter. I, I would say two though. Um, and then change your hardness to 100. This will ensure that when you guys do this next part, which is going to be on your new layer, uh, use your pen tool, right click, stroke path, and then drop down tool, select the word brush, press OK, and then as you guys see, let's make this a white though, let's make this white. So make your foreground white, and then brush, and then right click delete, and as you guys can see, I now have a basic outline of the polygon here. Um, with your pencil very simple very cool stuff here very uh, not cool very simple stuff here And we're gonna pretty much make a new layer now And we're gonna make the mesh so pretty much I'm gonna click on one start of the edge or one little Spot I will click right here and then pretty much every time you click again You want to make sure you click on the opposite side of the actual polygon So I'm gonna click on the opposite side over here Opposite side of that is over here opposite side of that is over here 
um, it's not really like an organized sort of like opposite sides. You'll pretty much find yourself making triangles. That's pretty much what you want to do. So if I even started here, I would just pretty much go here, 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 here. And that would do the same exact thing and just have like a, a, a little bit of a different mesh. So whatever does, whatever like floats your boat, right click, stroke path, brush, right click, delete the path. And then pretty much now we're going to make another new layer. And we're going to use the ellipse marquee tool. We're going to zoom in pretty much like... I'll say like right here. We're going to make a simple circle. Why is... Come on. Is that good enough? I don't want the circle to be too big. I want it to be just enough so you can kind of see where it is. Also, like that's pretty good. A pretty good size. Like a pretty good size circle. And you want to take this circle and you want to pretty much move it across other points. So every time you see a point or an intersecting line, you put the actual little circle there. Very simple, just use alt drag to make a duplicate and then use your arrow keys if you need to, to put it back where it should be. Okay, so cool. So pretty much, as you can see, I put it on every single intersecting point, every single little uh, point on the outside, and we have a very cool mesh here and we're pretty much done. So we're gonna pretty much just uh, control G to group it all together, all different layers. And then pretty much we're gonna make our second polygon here. And we're gonna make this polygon pretty big. I'm gonna use, what, eight sides? So yeah, octagon. And then we're gonna make this pretty big. Let's say like that big or so. We'll rasterize it and then we'll lower the opacity down. Just like so, and then I have my new layer, and I'm gonna take my pen tool and then pretty much redo this again. So I'm just gonna pretty much select all the different sides here, just like so with my pen tool. And if I want to, I can just pretty much stop wherever I want to. Maybe I wanna stop like one side, or maybe I'll stop doing two sides. It's so like right here, maybe I wanna stop. So right click, stroke path, brush, press OK, and then delete the path, and then make it yet again another new layer. We'll delete these two because we don't need those anymore. I'll take our pen tool, select the side, and then pretty much go opposite. So opposite, 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 and then here's opposite, there's pretty much opposite, and there we go. So we pretty much just made a whole bunch of triangles while doing this little mesh thing, right? I'm going to use another stroke path, another brush, and then we're just going to take from here one of the circles here, and we're just going to drag this right over. And then start putting them on every single intersecting point so of course the more sides you have the more intersecting points that you have and the more tedious it's going to be now there are of course plexus tutorials or excuse me plexus effect or like stocks or whatever on google but it's i i honestly think it's so much more pleasing if someone says i really like your like freaking design or whatever and then they go they go like what stock did you use and you're just like I didn't use a stock. I use my own Plex. Dude, I watched Sesso HQ and he showed me how to do it. And you know, it. I don't know. I feel like it would it would be like a lot more sort of like reassuring. Not reassuring. Like what would you say? Like a lot more pleased, a lot more happy, a lot more motivated. What the hell am I looking to say? You know what I'm trying to say though? Like if you would feel a lot better if someone was, you know, to ask you where'd you get that really amazing stock and you're just like, nah, I made it. It's one of those things, right? So I would suggest it is tedious. But just like sort of take your time on it. I'm I'm sort of rushing in a way. However, the point is still there. I'm not really this part you right here. You really can't rush because it's pretty much, you know, there's nothing different you can do. Whatever. Like they're all gonna be a, a certain kind of pentagon, and you're all gonna have circles on your intersecting points. So uh, I'm gonna quickly group this together. Control G. <clears throat> this is good. And then I'll do one last one. I'll speed this one up just so you guys already you guys already got the point. And we're gonna make this one what five? We have eight. Let's just do six six side here an octagon that's a, not a pentagon that's not an octagon that's a hexagon there we go um or a trapezoid two trapezoids we're going back to like kindergarten guys all right give me a second i'm gonna speed this up for you guys because you don't you don't need to see it again Okay, sweet. I'm gonna group this together and then pretty much we have what we need here. So we have three different polygons here, all different shapes and sizes or whatever. And then we're just gonna, where's this one at? This is that one. These are the two grouped together. No, so the other one's here. Okay, so delete this. All right, I'm gonna take this and move this a little bit to here. Maybe that one like there. Kind of have, oops, kind of have this one intersect a little bit maybe or even rotate it to so do something like that. I don't know. That's pretty good. I'm just trying to like uh, sort of fill the left uh, right hand side just a little bit. 
And I think that's pretty good. So right now I'm gonna group all this together and just kind of move that like right there. Sort of like where the middle is. That's pretty much the middle, right? That's middle enough. I want it to like bleed to the left hand side just a little bit. Okay, sweet. So at this very moment, you can go ahead and group all these things together and then we're gonna call this uh, backup. We're gonna call this backup and we're gonna group this, or excuse me, duplicate this, so Control J. <laughs> and then Control E to merge it all together and we're gonna have a backup here for later just in case we ever need it. And on this backup, we're just gonna call this polys because that's what they are. And then we're gonna change this color and we're gonna use layer mode and we're gonna use uh, color overlay. I'm gonna change this to blue here. Nice little blue, right? And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna make a duplicate by holding alt dragging. And we're gonna change this color to red. All right, else that's pinkish. That's a little bit more red. All right, sweet. So on this secondary red color here, I'm just gonna rotate this one like 180 degrees, sort of get a different angle going. I'll move this one like down here and I might just go ahead and duplicate it again, why the hell not? Maybe make it a little more smaller for the red, rotate it again a different way, and then maybe even take my eraser, make my eraser 100% uh, hardness, that was really hard for me to say for some reason, and then delete a couple of lines. It doesn't have to be completely perfect, like I'm using my eraser, a hardness eraser, uh, eraser, holy words are hard, English is difficult. Um, I'm sort of erasing or, or opening up some of these polygons here a little bit more, just enough so that I can kind of get a different look than I have, of course, on the bottom hand side. So you can't really completely tell that it was compl uh, like duplicated twice or three, uh, three times because there's different angles, there's different sizes, and now we're even changing the actual style up a little bit more just because we're erasing some stuff. So actually, I don't want to delete it there because that wouldn't make sense for the poly itself. Um, it's like that right there. So as you can see, it doesn't look exactly the same. You can't really completely tell that this and this is the exact same. Uh, maybe if I even erase this a little bit as well. It's pretty much the only purpose of why I'm doing this. Otherwise, I would just duplicate it again and then just call it a day. However, this looks good. We're just gonna move this down though a little bit, move that over a little bit, and then sort of like filling the space up. So right at this very moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a duplicate, or excuse me, I'm gonna group this all together and then make a duplicate and then merge it together. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Filter, Blur, Lens Blur. Let's throw all this down at zero because pretty much what we're gonna be doing and focusing on uh, really quickly as well, make sure your preview is on more accurate and not faster, so it gives you a more accurate, of course, look. And we're going to take our radius here, and the whole purpose of this, I'm zooming in a little bit more. Let me zoom in a little bit, please. I want to get, I want to be able to still see the lines, like, pretty heavily. But, like, I say six radius is pretty good. I'm press OK. And the only reason for this is it sort of gives us an outer glow without actually using the actual layer mode. But I am just want to use all the blurs, and then pretty much I'm going to go ahead and do... I'm gonna take my eraser or even use my actual masking eraser take my B uh, B for brush and then take my black brush and erase on this actual little uh, this masking tool here or mask selection here and then just erase in a couple spots what this will go ahead and do for you guys is sort of have a you'll have a glow on certain uh, certain areas or excuse me you have like a, almost an outer glow in certain areas and then other areas you have like a very nice uh, like very thin line so it'll, it'll look really good to give you a nice little dynamic to it so I think that's what looks okay. You probably can't tell it completely, but if you guys see it, it's definitely different. Definitely looks a little bit more different. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do it now is I'm gonna group or excuse me, merge two things together. So not merge them. I'm gonna make a duplicate and then merge them together. And then sort of I'm gonna add. Let's go ahead and add a, another lens blur, but make it blur a little bit more, like a little more heavy, like a half more. So uh, or 12 percent is pretty good. So 12, press OK. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna shrink this down like so lower my pass just a little bit and I'm gonna move this over as well to like the bottom side I'll maybe rotate a different way so it's not completely the same and maybe we'll take this one over here and move it like up there as well and this is sort of add a little more depth as well just to, like again I want to also fill a little more space and that looks pretty good that's fine right now you're probably like what the hell is going on it doesn't look anything like it. just relax It'll get there. Now, what you're gonna do at this very moment here is you wanna pretty much go ahead and we'll just go ahead and just group everything together. So pretty much shift click on everything, control J, control E, and we're gonna pretty much go ahead and put this on multiply, right? We're gonna put this on multiply, and as you guys see already, actually before we do that, before we put it on multiply, let's go ahead and just sort of leave it off, not put it on multiply, let's, uh, there we go. Keep it on normal, and we're gonna go to uh, filter, blur, and we're gonna go to lens blur, 
and we're gonna lens blur this like pretty heavily I'll select 20 this time press ok and then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take our of course our selection take our black brush we're gonna erase these edges really quickly because they look retarded okay and we're just gonna take certain points and sort of erase in certain points right just like so we, we did put a secondary blur the first time of these like uh the ones on the top and bottom are in the middle a little bit just to get more depth like i said and also you probably don't have to erase too much over there but i'm gonna erase like some stuff over here and then now at this moment we're gonna take another blur or excuse me another select everything Control j Control e basically we're, it's sort of like a very very weird rinse and repeat but the more layers you do sort of like the more better it looks so at this moment we're gonna use not a blur yeah we're gonna use blur we're gonna use radial blur and we're going to put it at 10 amount, put your blur, uh, blur method to zoom and your quality best, press OK. And you're going to sort of get this very weird, like, like this very zoom sort of like blur. And it looks really cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just erase in a couple spots once again. Let's just like get in here a little bit. Okay. That looks good. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is then group everything together again. Control J, Control E, and then go ahead and put it on multiply. We're gonna we'll keep the multiply like a little more, like a lower the opacity in the multiply like a little bit. I feel like that's pretty good. And then we're gonna take a brightness and contrast. I'm gonna put our brightness and our contrast up. Sort of get this kind of look to it. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to group everything once again. It's like a very weird rinse and repeat. Uh, merge it all together again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sort of erase a couple spots really quickly. And then sort of move it over. And then we're going to erase this over here so that you can't see it, of course. So that way it looks like we sort of have it bleeding over to the left-hand side as well. We'll say that looks pretty good. Take our brush and sort of erase that there. Okay. And this looks really good so far. We're definitely pretty much almost done at this very point. So at this very moment, you're going to go ahead and just sort of like group this again. Uh, pretty much, excuse me, when I say group this, I mean like, of course, I mean select all the actual layers that you have here, right? Select everything, including the background, control J and then control E. That's what I mean when I say group it all together again, just so I can just sort of like get that out there. And we're going to use Gaussian Blur this time, four pixels. We're going to take our eraser here. If you want to use a selection, you can, but I'm sort of just want to use the eraser. There we go. Right. Okay. And now we're sort of have this very nice depth to it. Now, if you guys want to, if you guys choose to want to use, uh, where is it at? Color balance. And sort of get a different sort of bluish tone here. You guys can go ahead and definitely do that. Move this around a little bit. Like that looks pretty good. This looks really nice as well. Hmm. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and do something. Make another new layer. And we're going to use a brush. We're going to use a soft brush. I'm going to select the red over here though. Like something around like maybe like even a burgundy even uh we'll use this red that looks good all right we're gonna click over here click up there click like right here a little bit and i'm gonna put this on linear dodge add lower the opacity down that now it's very pink here now if you see this sort of like you don't like this how this looks press Control u on your keyboard it brings up the hue and saturation tool on that layer on itself so if you guys want to you can change your hue which will change of course like the color itself so if you find a color that you like like this blue here and if you want it to be too bright just lower your lightness down and then you can put your uh, your saturation up a little bit if you want to so like let's say like green looks okay this orange looks pretty badass i think i'm gonna go with that orange and press okay now this does add a lot of light it does add it does look really really good to me like if you guys look at that it just looks a lot better to me take my eraser a little bit though and erase that i don't want to bleed over there too much now, if there's not enough blur for you guys, I would definitely say, of course, uh, merge everything together and then make another duplicate for like of everything again, just like so, right? And then use lens blur again. I would definitely want to get a very, very big blur going, like a very big radius blur, maybe. Maybe even take your threshold and your brightness up to get these circles coming through. Let's see. right get these circles showing a little bit 
And that's just using your brightness and your threshold. I see that's pretty good. Maybe the blur, the radial is too much. The radius is too much. Let's say like right, I'm trying to find the really good spot. Maybe like right here. So 35 radius, this is neat. this can be at zero. 35, zero, zero, 15, and we'll just say 30 for the sake of the actual settings that I have currently. Okay, press okay. We're gonna use our selection, mask selection. Take our brush here and erase in a couple spots. Right, sort of get something like that. And why the hell not? We'll add another brightness and contrast in here. Right. Okay. Let me erase this a little bit. Okay. Looking good. Now, pretty much at this very moment, you're literally... Yeah, you're pretty much done. I'm just going to go ahead and add the word plexus. I want to add... Let's actually make this capital. And we're going to use long haul because it's the font that I use. Make it white. Press OK. Long haul, not long shot. Put this in the middle. And we pretty much said Plexus backing tutorial. Make that next up bold. Lower this. We'll actually make this one bold and then make tutorial light. And then we'll also make this a color. Let's just choose this reddish tone here. Where is it? That's good enough. Get like a nice red. Okay. And then we're just gonna shrink this down just like so. And we'll call that finished. So as you guys can see, it's pretty much, it's very, very tedious. There's very, like a lot of blurs going on that's like necessary. Just because the more blurs you sort of do, the more depth you sort of get. And we're going to go ahead and put design by, uh, design by Accessor HQ. Really? Accessor, there we go. And so, yeah, like I said, the blurs are sort of very necessary to add depth, to add like that very cool sort of like tone to it. And like I said as well, also if you guys wanted to, like sort of add um, the, uh, where is the color balance to sort of like change up the colors if you want to. Sort of like, you know, you can get some very, very weird looking colors, but then it can also look really freaking good. Like that looks pretty badass. However, you would have to probably get rid of this here, yeah. And then sort of something like this. Like that looks fucking awesome as well. Like let's be honest. Uh, wow, that does look pretty cool, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know. See, I like finding some stuff that I like a lot more. So the reason why I use red and blues was because, of course, the first two things here on the top is red and uh, cyan and red. And then, of course, like a secondary color to red would be like a yellow or not secondary, but you know what I'm trying to say, right? So I, I want to use those two colors to sort of get um like more of a more changes through. Like if, if I wanted to, I can get some very cool color tones. And if you wanted to, maybe even use pink and blue and then probably change this up around like up here. You probably get a very, very nice color scheme. Or whatever the hell works. I don't. I wouldn't say hue and saturation works though, because let's see what happens. I mean, that looks very weird. But I'm pretty sure if you did use pink and blue from the start, you get a very nice color. Like that doesn't look terrible. But there's just there's reasons why you don't want to just use hue and saturation. So yeah. Uh. I don't know. Maybe like I don't know. You can probably find some colors in here though. Like th through the spectrum. Like before, if you watch this tour and then you go for it. So if you like purple and yellow would definitely look dope. Uh, green and pink would definitely look dope. Even like red and orange would look probably badass. Like pink and blue would look badass. Like there's some certain colors in there that you had to probably start off with to make it look really, really cool. However, I am done with this tutorial here today. So if you guys really did enjoy, please leave a like, two likes on the video. Equally, secret down below. And I just sort of, I like really wanted to do this video. Just, I, I don't know. I really like Plexus, dudes. I really, really do. And it's sort of like a Plexus, um simplistic video because i really didn't do much with the actual like the text itself but it's sort of simplistic it's very simple to do and it looks really badass if you take your time on it and stuff like that like i said previously i'm sort of want to add a little more color here like that so yeah i do hope you guys enjoyed it again i already said two likes on views you can say down below but if you guys haven't already follow me on uh twitter at system hq 
uh, pretty much follow my Selfie, or if you guys haven't checked out my Selfie, check out my Selfie, Selfie.com slash HQ for any pre mades and packs as low as $1, which will be my Oasis font. And it's pretty dope. It's pretty fun. I will be adding a lot of stuff. It's, it's summertime. I'm ready to freaking grind again. It's 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 that time of the freaking year. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty much done. I don't want to hold you guys too too like too much. However, I will have in the description down below this uh, Plexus little uh, text effect that you have here to make this go with this even look freaking better. However, of course, if you guys want to the pre-made or excuse me, or I guess the pre-made, the secret download will be located here. So I do have, oh, dude. I love this one. I took my time on this one. Very, very. Di I definitely took my time on this one. And I also have these really weird, like little triangles showing up a little bit. And the way, I, the way I actually did that, I didn't really show you guys, but you guys can probably make the little inference. Is you just sort of select different shapes that you guys kind of see. I'm still going with the tour. I just want, I want to add more because I see like stuff that I can do here. It's just like it's the designer in me telling me not to stop, but I do need to stop. But I want to just show you guys really quickly. If you just select different polygons. Or different shapes here they can, you can just sort of see different closed shapes like right here right there like right here you can probably see a shape and then let's just say over here you see a shape like right here right and then let you sort of like go for whatever however long you want to and then pretty much use a filter and or excuse me use a fill use white press ok and then just put it on overlay and then you sort of get more depth as well it looks freaking badass like dude Okay, you guys have to totally tell, like, please tweet me if you guys do make this, like, little plexus back. I want to see what else you guys can do. And, uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Soso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later.